you were to say, of all the areas of human life, where can data bring the biggest improvements? What would your answer be? That's a pretty heavy question for, I should have taken half an hour to think about that, right? <laughs> um, you know, look, um, <clears throat> I think the answers are probably obvious in, in some sense, where health is an area where I've not done a lot of work personally, but I'm sure it's incredibly valuable. Um, you know, doctors are not known for being terribly analytics driven. I don't know the culture enough as to know why. Um, you know, in terms of areas that we're, uh, that I would like us to focus on at 538, a little bit more than we do now, um, criminality and criminal justice is an interesting area, in part because you have lots of issues with, with data, um, where if you want to know how many police officers are killed, how many people are killed by police officers, you don't really know that very well. Um, uh, education is an area where I suspect you have a lot of data used poorly, um, as well as data used well. Um, you know, urban planning is something we're fascinated by. We um, did uh, a big analysis of Uber data that New York City spent like $2 million to conclude what we concluded on our own in a week or two of work, which is that Uber, by and large, in New York was, um, was not adding cars to the streets, at least not in Manhattan. So we're in a law school right now. If we applied a lot more data to the law, what kind of improvement could you imagine we might come up with, just tentatively? See, I think that might be the, the last field where, <laughs> <laughs> where you would have a lot yeah. of, and I don't say that in a pejorative way at all, um, but you know, a lot of the advantage of working with data sets and becoming more adept at it is that you get an answer that's at least kind of approximately right, whereas, um, whereas the legal sector, I think, relies more on, on precision you want a very precise and possibly wrong answer, which is kind of what you're trying to avoid sometimes when you're doing um, statistical analysis. I sometimes wonder, you know, how much data do people want? As part of my prep for these, I went back to your high school yearbook, <laughs> and I, I took a look at the quotation you left. It's from Macbeth. It goes as follows. <laughs> then the liars and swearers are fools, for there are liars and swearers enough to beat the honest men and <laughs> hang up them. It's now, a little self-righteous, <laughs> but you're entitled to that when you're in high school. I, no, I, I have no objection <laughs> to the sentiment, but I've read papers which show when you give a lot of people the chance to view the quality of their hospital or doctor, they're not interested. So as, as a citizenry, how much data do you think people want, or do you think it's a kind of entertainment where sports, betting, politics, a kind of horse race, it's fine, but real data, do people want to see data on how good or how honest they actually are, or is it more like the Macbeth quotation? I'm like that. My partner got really into 23 and me, I guess, and like wanted all this detail. They don't actually tell you <coughs> all that much, but I'm like, you know, I don't want to have to stress about a bunch of things that I can't necessarily affect, but, um, but, I don't know. I mean, um, the the notion of um, empowering people to make better decisions with their own health is um, a noble notion. I guess I'm kind of enough of a a free marketer that I say, you know, you should give people information whether they use it well or not. It's kind of their right to have it. But I'm not sure I have a firm conclusion about whether it leads to better decisions or or not. You know, again, my impression is that. Um, among doctors and hospital administrators that they're not terribly data-driven either, despite their obviously rigorous work in other respects. 